Hello, my name is JCRP and you're watching Kalakar Makerspace videos. In today's video, we're going to see how I made this beautiful cabinet which I'll be showing at the end of the video. To begin with, I'm going to cut the MDF sheets using the CNC machine. The design for this cabinet is already done and here using the CNC machine, I'm cutting 12mm MDF which will form the backer board of the entire cabinet. I used 12mm because this cabinet is almost 7 feet height and I thought 12mm will give some strength to the material. After cutting the 12mm, it goes to the assembly section while the staff take the next sheet. This is 18mm MDF and they are mounting it on the machine. On this piece of MDF, I'm going to cut the sides and the top and bottom section. And here I'm using 4mm milling bit on my CNC machine which is drilling a 4.5mm hole for the shelf holders. These shelf holders are stainless steel pins which I'll be showing at the later part of the video. I just love to see how the machine moves and lately I have moved all my projects to the CNC machine because it's just easy to cut the parts and I can put my creative energy into designing these projects. Here it's cutting the top and bottom sides and it has cut within half an hour all the pieces and here my stuff is cleaning it and after cleaning I actually name every part so that I don't mess it up on the assembling table. Let's take it to the assembling section now. After the sides and top and bottom, now we have to cut the door and to do that I have loaded the door program into the CNC machine. First it is going to cut the windows in the door. Each door will have three windows which will mount some 4mm clear glasses. For that the machine will be actually cutting a groove in the later part of the video. So here right now you're seeing the machine cutting the windows out. Because it's a 4mm bit and the thickness of the material is 18mm, at one plunge it goes only 9mm deep and it takes two passes to cut each section. If I do not do that, then the bits will definitely break no matter how slow I run the machine. So here all the windows are cut. Before I cut the doors into two different halves, I'm going ahead and doing the grooves. To do that, there is a small function called area clearance in the CNC program, which I'm running along the edges of the windows. Here you can see how the grooves have been cut. It is almost 8mm deep. And once the grooves are cut, the machine is going ahead and separating the two doors into two different pieces. Actually, while cutting, the machine runs at a very slow pace, around 30% of its actual speed. Because no matter how uh, deep or how less uh, deep I kept the bit, it will definitely break if I run the machine really fast. Here's Avinash uh, taking the doors and cleaning it off and now let's start the assembling process. First I bring the backer board and set it on the work table. This is the top section and it's 18mm MDF again. To Glue all the pieces together, I'm going to use Fevicol. It's a very famous glue here in India. And I find the strength of Fevicol to be really incredible. I've done a stress test once and the joint did not break, but the MDF actually broke. It's that good if you use the right amount and used the right amount of clamping pressure. To align both the pieces, I am using a 3D printed corner clamp. This I got this file from Thingiverse. I'll try to put a link in the description so that you can download and 3D print it. 
After the corner clamp is set, I am using some long uh, F clamps to actually push the pieces together and you can, can see how much the glue has squeezed out. With MDF it is always a good idea to pre-drill and countersink otherwise the MDF will split. I am not showing actually the screwing of the pieces together because it's just a trivial one. So here you can see me assembling the sides. Already the top and bottom pieces are put together. So after applying a liberal amount of Fevicol on one side, I'm just flipping it while Deva and Shiva helping me and we are aligning the pieces flush to the corner. This is me assembling the second half while the other side has already been screwed. Here you can see the screws on the sides while we flip the entire cabinet out. Wow, that's got really really heavy very very soon. MDF although it's called as medium density foam, it's a very heavy material particularly if you use 18 mm thick MDF. Because MDF sheets have a little bit of bow on them while transportation and everything, it is necessary that we clamp each and every piece before driving in the screws. So once we align the pieces with the F clamps, I was pre-drilling the holes and Shiva was driving in the screws. We use this Bosch machine quite often and although it's a cheap alternative, it has really really worked out really good. Once the carcass of the cabinet is ready, it's time to decorate it. For that I'm using this 18mm MDF which has been pre-glued. It's actually 36mm right now and I'm just applying another liberal coat of Fevicol and using some F clamps pushing it to the bottom base of the cabinet. Because this is going to be a really integral part which decides the structural strength of the cabinet, I am pre-drilling and using the screws. And this time to countersink, I'm using a technique that I learned from the carpenters. It's just to use the bit which drives the screw to make the countersink holes. That was quite helpful and made the process really fast. If you see me using a lot of glue while working with MDF, it's only because MDF is a porous material and there is a tendency for it to absorb some fevicol. So adding a liberal amount really helps in the structure. After that it's just more or less framing the bottom part of it. Here you see the thickness is almost 36 mm and here we are driving the last screws. After that here's a chamfer bit that I have mounted on the router. This is a makeshift router that I made and I have a video for that. You can check it in the top right corner in the eye icon. With an 18mm MDF, I am making a chamfer and it's come out really, really good. And you can see how it goes on the 36mm piece, which I had just added a few minutes ago. This time, this is a decorative piece and it's not going to add any structural value. So instead of using screws, I will be using only nails to attach this piece. The nails do not offer any structural strength. It's mostly the fevicol, the glue that actually does the work. The nail's job is just to hold the pieces till the glue dries. So I framed the entire cabinet on all four sides with this chamfered piece and we simply just used nails. After that, here is a 8mm MDF putty that I am going to use to beef up the border a little bit more 
because on the top end I need a different design I don't want to put a chamfer uh, piece over there also so here I'm applying glue and then I'm going to add this to the 36 mm MDF to just beef it up to give space for the door to close and open I'm holding a 18 mm MDF piece while Shiva is driving the nails inside He's just aligning it properly and then driving the final nail in here. I don't know what is the name of this router bit but this is something that I really really love and it makes this beautiful design on the MDF. Here again I'm using the 18mm MDF which is of a width of 36mm so that it fits properly on top of the 8mm MDF that I just added. These are leftover pieces from a lot of projects so this worked out really good here. Because I'm trying to make a picture frame kind of border, I'm tilting the miter saw to 45 degree and then we are cutting the pieces. And again lots and lots of nails to attach these pieces together. Even this trim I framed on all four sides and here you can see at the top how the design is. I'm trying to fit the door and see if it uh, matches properly. Although I had kept a 18mm MDF on the top, there seems to be 2mm uh, uh, difference. So I'm taking the doors back to the miter saw and removing the 2mm so that the door sits flush and nice. This is a technique that I learned from the rest of that. If the pieces are too long then you just lift the pieces and uh, let the blade do its work. After cutting that the door seems to go open and close pretty nice. It's a silly demonstration that I tried. These are the pins that are going to hold the shelf. These are uh, stainless steel ones and they are pretty strong. Seems 4.5 mm is a bit small for the shelf holder pins but then nobody actually moves the shelf after once installed for at least 2-3 years. So I think my decision to drill 4.5 mm has worked out good here. The shelf that I'm trying to fit here is actually not small. It is because the sides have bowed in but rest assured the rest two shelves went in really nice. This ball like thing is the feet of the cabinet and it's actually made out of pine wood. I do not have a lathe at the shop so I took these pieces to the market and I got it done from a vendor. The way he does this work is actually mesmerizing. It doesn't look like that he's working with wood but it actually looks like butter. He took 5 minutes for each piece and it was a real treat to watch him while he works. The feet has come out really really good but then this part which is going to rest on the floor is a bit more curved to my taste so I am flattening it out on the belt sander. While I do that I am turning the piece so that it sands equally on all the sides. This is a very dangerous cut that I am trying but be assured that I was holding the piece very strong and uh, Shiva was trying to do the cut as slow as possible. Please do not try this at home, it's actually not safe. 
I regretted my decision later and I would never try it. Here I am drilling a 8mm hole so that I can put this kind of a nut there. I don't know what name of this nut is but I use it more often. It has a 6mm thread inside. So using a 6mm bolt I will be able to screw this piece beneath the cabinet just like that. Once the cabinet is done it's time for painting so here Deva is preparing the polish to putty and he is applying it on all the nails and screw holes. The polish to putty dries very soon so he is able to go ahead and sand it real quick and after that this is PS white automotive primer that he is applying on MDF. We mostly use uh, automotive paints because it gives a good finish. This entire painting process is a very complicated one and I want to make a separate video of it. So let me know if you want to see such videos by commenting. Once the primer is done, we decided to put the hinges and I chose to use the European hinges. The European hinges are one of the easiest ones to use because even if you install them wrong, you have adjustments in it so that you can correct them very easily. After drilling a 32mm hole, we have to just position the hinges and drive in the screws. Even the feet get their own coat of paint because I wanted the entire cabinet to be of uniform color. This is Atlantic blue color from Duco Paints and it's from a company called ExoNoble. I really really love this color. It's turned out really nice and when Deva applied it on the white primer, oh my god, it was just simply gorgeous. And as usual, my staff after finishing the project, they did not take a good video or a good photo. But the client Mr. Amit Trivedi was kind enough to send me a video which I have attached it right now. So go ahead, take a look at the video and let me know what you think in the comments. I really hope you learned something from this video. I know most of the things are done using CNC but it's the craft that matters and not the tools that we use. If I did not have a CNC, I would have definitely used the tools that I had in hand and you used to see the videos I made with hand tools also. I hope you like this video. Please let me know your comments. I really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and keep following me and I'll try to be regular with my videos. Hope to see you soon. Until next time, happy learning.